okay welcome back now you have created a user and uh, uh, and the group in active directory and both of these uh, the user and the groups are now enabled for unix management via authentication services so what to do now is as you may know that uh, active directory offers something that's called a group policy and group policy management in active directory allows you to define a policy that then can be assigned to users computers or whatever to configure certain things coming from a central repository via this policy. And the same applies to authentication services because authentication services supports group management via Active Directory for dedicated settings on Unix based information. So it works pretty much in the same way as we have seen before while when creating the user or the group. We have some kind of plugins or in this case they are called administrative templates for group management that are to be installed when you install the uh, product to the uh, to the to your management station or to your, to a whatever system and they will gonna configure the group policy management plugin for the Microsoft management console console accordingly so if you call the group management policy editor you're gonna see all your policies and whatever in your domain and now we're gonna create a new policy object uh, group policy objects and create it here I just have it created here already so let's just edit it here and if you open the edit or in the creation you're going to see that you have your policy tab over there and now you see something that is called Unix setting and Unix setting comes from the installation of authentication services you still see you in addition will see that we have Mac OS settings as well because authentication services support Mac OS based systems too so you have their own configuration objects located in that in that branch but we're going to stick for the unix settings because our system at the current moment is a centos so it's not a mac os so let's go here to the unix settings expand authentication services and maybe click on client configuration and then you're going to see all these various parts of the definitions that can be customized in your policy we're going to head for the message of the day and we're going to open this one by double click in and let's enter some very nice text to be greeting the user whatever welcome to and now you want to see the host name or the of the dedicated system that you are logging into and um, to avoid that you need to write a policy object for each and every host and assign it with a single policy you can have something that's called a text replacement macro you're going to see it over here in your text replacement macro tab and if you just add something like dollar hostname this is just my convention so you can name it everything you want it is just a string that is looked for in in, in that uh, in that string on the other on the other tab to be replaced in this case we're going to replace it with the output of the bin hostname command just type it in the right way so this will be a run and the output then will be appended or inserted at the at this special place in in your file in this case just click on ok click on the this one here and just type the replacement string here and something like that very easy straightforward just click on ok and now you have just created this or just co co configured this little item in the policy if you just click on uh, on this one here just it is being saved and now it is here in the authentication so of services policy you now need to link it to somewhere so it is executed and uh, linked to the appropriate objects accordingly I'll just link it here so I create a link an existing GPO and I link my authentication service to the top of my domain so it will apply to any system and user to that domain that's all I need to do. Let's go back to our authentication services controlled Linux system. The Linux system now, I just log into the, with the root account. This is just, oh, it just, it, it already works. Uh, otherwise you may have to refresh the policy so that it gets downloaded and initialized because you may know that in Windows systems you have something like GP update slash force to make a GP up group policy up pull from the Active Directory to your local system. The same is available in Unix. 
in with the authentication service. In this case, it is called uh, opt quest bin VGP tool. A VGP tool is the second one in, in your arsenals of arrows to manage uh, Windows and uh, Unix. Uh, the other one is uh, VAST tool and now it's VGP tool. So this stands for group policy tools. And usually you just give it a VGP tool apply if that's required and this now refreshes the group policy. Uh, but usually this is not required because it gets refreshed constantly every time you log in or every or configurable after a certain amount of time and whatever. As you see, if I now log out here and log in with the other one with my off demo user, give it a password, you're going to see the login screen and you see this little nice welcome message appearing. And that's it. Very straight, very easy, straightforward. Another nice feature I want to show you for authentication services is about access control. You may want to set up some kind of access control to restrict access to certain uh, Unix systems to, for certain users just to control who has access to what. Okay, that's fine. And uh, authentication service has some kind of uh, built-in feature to support this. Again, this goes via your normal standard group policy. So in this case, just have a look on our group policy we have defined earlier. So we have this authentication services policy. We just go edit, go to our policy stuff, the Unix settings, expand authentication services, and click on access control. And you're going to see that there are two entries by default. One is called users.deny and one, the other one is users.allow. And there's a folder called service access and this pretty much has nothing in it but it pretty much goes to the same approach but this is for services only. So back to the normal upper area. So if you just want to use a deny policy just use users deny and of course you could now enter a couple of users you want to deny access. For instance if you want to go with this off user, check the name, Oops, not off user, it is off demo as usual. So now it has added the off demo user. And if I want to click on OK and close this again, so let's get saved. So when I now try to log in to my off demo, just to make sure that I don't have put in the wrong password. As OK, now you still can log in. OK, let's log out of here. So let's log in as the root. Here we go. Let's just call the VGP tool again to get a refresh of the group policy. And now you see that in the policy you have a couple of entries from the uh, applied settings. And you now see that the off demo user was uh, added to the users.deny file. A couple of other entries already present from my older demos, but it doesn't matter, you still have it have the off demo now in. Okay, so let's go out of this here. Let's log out. Let's use the off demo user again. And password 123 as usual. And now login is denied. Try again. Off demo password 123 whatever. And I now did it two times and usually yeah, that indicates now the access now is denied. Of course, we're going to revert this very quickly. Just go to the auth services policy, click on edit, click on the policies tab, go to Unix settings, authentication services, access control and users deny. Get this one out of it, just remove it. Click on OK, save the policy, go back to the Unix, log in as root, go to the call the pass, call the call the GPO update. And now you see that the off demo was removed. You see it here in the in the printout, removed 
and pass for u slash off demo. Okay, that should do the trick. Ah, come on, here we go. So if I use off demo again, I now can log in again. Very easy, straightforward. After we have played around a little bit with the group policies in a basic way, or well, let's let's have a look on more detailed stuff in this group policy management tool. And uh, if you just go back to the group policy and just open up the uh, client configuration path, you're going to see all this stuff that is in there by default. And there are a couple of things like whatever, Savonic links, startup scripts or startup scripts, for instance. This is just something you can just use that it runs if the user logs in for the system. Um, you can have a couple of other things like refresh scripts. And refresh scripts is a little bit different because it is run on a schedule. It can be one run once or it can be scheduled to run maybe each hour or whatever you want. So that there may be a couple of housekeeping is running in the background controlled by these scripts. Whatever you want to implement, that strictly depends to you. But there's an op opportunity to configure it here in this way. Another nice feature you could use is about whatever we have seen here, like the cron tab to manipulate cron entries for task, uh, scheduled task execution of Unix. That's supported as well. Uh, you can insert licenses for authentication services if you want. And of course, you can do something like sudo configuration. And sudo configuration in this case is really how to customize the behavior of sudo on your system. So, for instance, if you double click on sudo, you can just add some kind of command that should be whatever, uh, like user bin ls, that's another not a nice one, but whatever it is. So, it can be now uh, added here in these type of uh, dialog boxes, and maybe you can assign it to a user. And now this user could run like whatever, like this, for instance, var log secure, for instance. So now the user should be able to execute a command like ls, uh, or no, not, not, maybe not ls, it's not, not a good one, just maybe user bin cat, to, just to take a look into this secured file. This is not accessible by default with that uh, entry to the Zulu file, you could achieve that this user who's in that list down below could execute that command to get an insight into that file if you want. And with that capability, now you can configure all the Zulu file on a particular box that is controlled, say, via this uh, group policy, just to be in sync with your policy defined in this group policy object in Active Directory. And this is a very nice way to control Zulu management. We have a more sophisticated way in authentication service or in the Privilege Access Suite for Unix product where authentication service is a part of uh, to control management of sudo, but we're going to talk about this later in this video series. So just, just for this moment, you can control sudo management and distribution of sudoers files via group policy as well. And this is a very nice feature. Just to mention this and maybe just one thing. Well, there are so many things that you can configure. Uh, one of the things is you have a client side, side extension port capability, so you can write your own stuff and put it here into that system. Uh, but this is more or less something you need to develop on your own. And to be honest, I'm not, a, I'm not an expert on how to write these kind of extensions, so I leave it to the real programmers to do this. On the other hand, something here in this area is about identity mapping. And identity mapping gives you something like the mapped users or overrides. And this is a feature of authentication services that you can manipulate the uh, information that is taken into the consideration when you're logging into a system. So you may log in maybe to with, uh, with a local account that is mapped to an Active Directory account to a local system in, on the Unix side so that you can you, or you log in with a local user, but the, the password comes from, your, from, a, from a mapped account from Active Directory. 
or you can have some kind of overrides so that you want to may manipulate in a way what may, maybe the home directory or the or other information in your normal password string that is stored in the etc password or etc shadow file to be interpreted when you log in locally to that box but originally uh, controlled via the group policy in uh, in the active directory or the group policy you have defined for authentication services this is very nice if you have have maybe a matching group policy that matches maybe 99.9 percent .9 of your users and you just want to tweak it a little bit to match all of your users and you don't want to have a, a, sim, a single policy for this and so you can just make it a little bit more easier to handle but this is as i said a uh, well, very nice feature if you if, if you want to use it you have to decide on your own please have a look to the manual where this feature is described but i find it very useful in a couple of use cases on customer sites to make this happening via this approach and this can be controlled as i said by a group policy as well